I noticed that sometimes in the comments below my reviews you guys accuse me of being paid off by some car manufacturers to criticize others and to praise this particular brand. These particular brands are usually, usually German and they shall remain nameless. So I decided to show you to what lengths I go to actually find faults in various cars. And here we are. Fault number one, this is a Volkswagen Caddy old truck, old truck as an all wheel drive. And do you see a spare tire anywhere here? No, you don't, because Volkswagen Caddy old truck doesn't have a spare. How is it possible that an all wheel drive car doesn't have a spare? That's not the only problem in this off roadish Caddy. It was discovered by people testing the car before me. Front spoiler is too low, they broke it along with the panel protecting the engine. Dear Volkswagen, if you stick an Alltrack badge on your car, at least make the ground clearance and off-road angles big enough to cross some basic obstacles. Otherwise, bumpers will fall off. Another problem is a relatively narrow door opening and a high sill. Sure, it's difficult for my 93-year-old grandfather to get in because he's 93, but even I have problems. Spare me the fat jokes. See? Oh! I have to lift my foot high to actually get inside. Now, here comes praise for a French car. In a Peugeot Partner, I don't have this problem because the floor is flat. And space in the back is hardly class leading. The floor is not flat because of four motion. Back seat split 60 40, not individually like in Peugeot Partner, praising a French car again here. There is no glass roof, so it's dark, and there is no extra overhead storage for passengers in the back. But at least there is an AC vent and a 12 volt socket and a cup holder, and some storage in the door bins. Fold the seats, that's pretty easy. Just pull a couple of straps and you get a big flat loading space. How big? It's about 140 centimeters long up to here, about 110 wide and about 120 high. Multiply this together and you get about 1850 liters. Now that's a fair bit of the 3030 liters Volkswagen claims. Okay, so maybe 3030 is for the extended wheelbase version. No, that's about 3,900 liters and in case of a panel van it's over 4,000 liters. So where's the 1,200 liters gone? First of all seats in the second row can be removed which expands cargo volume to about 2,400 liters. Give or take because I have no clue how to calculate space in the footwells. And then there is the optional folding front passenger seat and all that should give us 3,030 liters. Speaking in Volkswagen's defense, I should add Dacia Docker, which is very similar in size, also promises 3000 liters cargo volume, so always check how this theoretical volume is calculated. That said, with back seats removed, Caddy should swallow two Euro pallets. Generally, I always say try before you buy, so when you go to the dealer, take with you the stuff that you like to carry with you in the car or arrange a test drive to wherever you keep all the bulky stuff and try to load it all in. Besides extended wheelbase, which could also make a good camper van, Caddy is also available as a seven-seater. Just bear in mind, taking rear seats in and out takes two pairs of strong arms. As this car will mainly carry large heavy items, there is nothing to obstruct loading and that means no shopping bag hooks but you can order a sliding floor, which will make it easier to access items further inside the boot. This tailgate can be replaced with a vertically split two-wing door. In the front, you get the usual instrument cluster, AC, optional climate control in this test car, sat-nav, optional as well, decent sized glove box, a drawer under the passenger seat, not so big storage under the armrest, but with a USB port. There is also a place for your smartphone with more ports, and a cubby on top of the dashboard. This one closes, but if you want a 12 volt socket in there, it will be open.
This test example is powered by a 2 liter 150 horsepower diesel, it's mated to a 6 speed DSG Doppelkupplungsgetriebe or double clutch gearbox. I don't like how it shifts gears between first and second, second and third. It's a very short and very abrupt change, but I guess it has to do with uh, preparing this car for carrying heavy loads. Caddy drives. It's not too loud, not too quiet, the seats are comfortable, the uh, driving position is high, there is good visibility all around, including visibility in the back. I mean, there are a lot of large windows here. Now, when I said quiet, there is only one slight problem. When you're on a bumpy road, there is some unidentified noise coming from the back. By unidentified, I mean it's not from the suspension. It's definitely not from the suspension. It's probably from the chassis twisting. I guess with heavy load, you won't have this problem because everything will be pressed nice and tight to the road. You can get the Caddy with adaptive cruise control, it's got an attention monitor for the driver so you don't fall asleep, and uh, yeah, I think it's got everything you may ever need. But does it really? Since I have adaptive cruise control, which, by the way, is great on the motorway, not so great in traffic on a ring road, for example, uh, because the system keeps too much of a distance, so people keep cutting in. But anyway, since I have adaptive cruise control, I also wouldn't mind a lane assist system. I mean, that would be great. Why? This is a tall car and it's very susceptible to crosswinds. The steering is quite light, which, again, is great around the city because it's easy to maneuver the, the caddy but when you're on a motorway with this light steering you can find yourself changing lanes unintentionally. From driver's point of view I'm not particularly keen on the shelf above my head. Sure it's in many delivery vehicles but this one here is exceptionally deep and moved backwards so reaching something while on the move can be a challenge. Yes, I know, for safety reasons you should stop, yada, 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 but drivers do certain things without thinking. I also don't like how low the sat-nav is. So I have my air conditioning controls on top and then sat-nav is down there. So if I need to check something or set the sat-nav, I have to take my eyes off the road to deal with that. And praising a French car again, praising a French car again, in a Citroen Berlingo or a Peugeot Partner, sat-nav is on top of the dashboard. Yes, it looks like a last-minute job, but at least it's there and I can see the road, even with a corner of my eye, but I can still see the road ahead of me rather than look down here. Bear in mind that in the facelifted Amarok, they changed it already, so the AC controls are down and the sat-nav is up here. So they've realized it, they just haven't changed it in the caddy yet. Average fuel consumption is about 6-7 liters per 100 kilometers combined and without any cargo. It's a similar thing on motorway because aerodynamics are not in caddy's favor. I wonder how much more diesel it would use without this silly front spoiler which limits its off-road abilities. By the way, Alltrack's ground clearance is just half a centimeter higher than that of an ordinary caddy, but some two centimeters higher than a Berlingo. I suspect all-wheel drive in this sort of a car won't be used off-road much, but rather to improve traction in bad weather with heavy load. So what makes VW stand out from the competition? Caddy comes in three versions. This family-oriented version, a kind of workhorse people carrier, and a panel van. There are also two wheelbase lengths and a choice of drivetrains and transmissions. All-wheel drive could be a deciding factor here. Prices start at around 16,000 euro for a panel van, but this old track with options goes into high 30s, low 40s. And how could they not fit a spare in an old track? As a business owner, do you have a car which is just a workhorse? Or maybe you need something more family-oriented? Let me know in the comments below, share, rate and subscribe. New episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.